So. Dann schauen wir mal. Funktioniert alles? Jo. Gut. Chat. So, nichts bis jetzt gemacht, außer eben Treiber eingestellt und alles mögliche und die Tasten belegt. Auf Brands kenne ich mich auch nicht aus. <lacht> Gucken wir mal, drehen wir mal ein paar Runden. Das ist ganz anders als das T300. Holy shit. Alter. Okay. Das wird eine Umgewöhnung. Ähm. Ich glaube, ich sitze auch weiter vom Bildschirm weg jetzt mit dem neuen Setup. Das ist ein Meterstab. Das Field of View. Oh, gleich wieder da. Dann schauen wir mal weiter. Oh, so, wie weit bin ich jetzt weg fürs Field of View? Achtzig Zentimeter. Okay, scheiße, das ist viel. Das sind ja zwölf Zentimeter mehr als sonst. Das Field of View berechnen. Äh, 21 zu 9, 31 Zoll, 80 Zentimeter, 50 Grad, okay. Alter. Okay. Das ist eine wahnsinnige Umstellung mit den 8 Newtonmeter jetzt im Vergleich zu den 4,5-5, die ich vorher hatte mit meinem T300. Aber man merkt einfach, es kommt so viel schneller die Info an. Alter. Oh Gott, und ich glaube, 8 Newtonmeter ist fast zu stark für meine Nudelarme. <lacht> ja, man merkt auch, ich kenne Brands Hedge überhaupt nicht. So, ich glaube, ich steige erstmal eine Strecke, die ich kenne. Für den Anfang, bis ich mich ans Lenkrad gewohnt habe und dann übe ich Brands Hatch fürs Competition morgen. Aber wo schmeiße ich mich denn mal rein? Irgendwas, was nicht so langweilig ist wie Monza. Gehen wir mal Spar. So. Aber oh, es ist denn so heiß? Erstmal das Wetter nochmal umstellen. Ups. Guck 
gucken wir mal. Vielleicht passt es jetzt ja besser. Boah, passt. So. Dann guck mal hier mal ein bisschen rum, was ich nicht gewohnt habe. Ich muss echt sagen, ich glaube 8 Newtonmeter ist mir zu viel. Ich bin es halt einfach null gewohnt. Ich halte halt jetzt immer meinen Lenkwinkel da an, wo auf meinem T300 sich das eben angefühlt hat, als wäre es voll. Und jetzt ist mein Force Feedback gerade ausgegangen. Warum ist mein Force Feedback ausgegangen? Okay. Vielleicht ist das schon behoben. Mein Lenkrad reagiert nicht mehr. Ähm... Guck mal, mein Treiber. Kurz das Lenkrad ab und aufgesteckt. Okay. Ja, ich glaube, ich habe einfach das Lenkrad nicht fest genug gemacht beim ersten Mal. Hoffentlich passiert es jetzt nicht mehr. <lacht> so, aber jetzt. Ja, das Lenkrad ist schon wieder schwer, da ist schon wieder. Sollte wieder alles funktionieren. Ja, da ist das Feedback wieder. Alles gut. Okay. Oida. Diese Schlaglöcher hier aus dem Pit-Exit jetzt. Die merkst du richtig. Das war beim T300 immer nur so ein Vorschlag, dass da jetzt gerade ein Schlagloch war. Aber hier fühlt es sich aus anders, als du einfach mit einem prügelharten Auto da drüber rödeln. Ich muss mal gucken, dass ich das hier irgendwie umbaue, dass der Bildschirm wieder näher da ist. Ey, das wird eine Heidenumgewöhnung. Hey, what's up? Gotta bring the chat closer soon. I'll do it right now, actually. It's because I can't reach it. Try drifting. Um, 
I only have the GT3 rim. I don't have a round wheel, so drifting will be hard, I guess. And I don't really have a drift game. But uh, we could drive uh, GT4 later. Because you can somewhat drift with them, in my opinion. Those bumps are just so much more present now. It's incredible. Okay, but I gotta get used to my field of view. Cause I'm just turning in way too rapidly, if you ask me. Here, let's do that. Try again. A lot of rust and a new wheel. <laughs> Let's make the setup a little safer. Uh, yeah, I definitely say so. Um, I don't know about uh, if you don't have the boost kit though, because I haven't tried that yet. But with the boost kit, like every single detail you could slightly feel in the T300 is way, way more present in the CSL DD. Plus, I feel like it's uh, communicated a lot faster to your hands. And uh, yeah, there are also things I really could not feel with the, C uh, with the T300 that I now can feel just fine, like I always struggle to feel understeer on the T300 for some reason and uh, the CSL DD so far I haven't found anything I don't like about it but uh, compared to the reviews you, you might have seen already I'm not coming from a DD1 or a hugely expensive direct drive wheel I'm just a pleb, really. Like, I've only ever used the T300 for years. And uh, this definitely feels like a huge, huge upgrade. Okay, I'm scared of a rouge. My tires are cold. <laughs> and I want a new setup. Uh, understeer. Oh god. Yeah, it's definitely faster. 100%. But it's not making me faster because I'm just driving completely shit right now. <laughs> Should have gotten rid of my rust before starting the stream, I think. But I really wanted to give the... Re the, my uh, very very first impressions like those are literally my first like three laps in the stream 
I only got out of, out of the pits once, shortly, to see if my buttons work, and that's about it. Uh, the T300 had about 5 newton meters as well, I think, yeah. So the overall strength of the T300 was fine, just fine for me. Um, I'm on a boost kit right now, so I have 8 newton meters. And uh, it's taking a lot more time to adjust to that as I thought it would. Because I just stopped turning in when I feel the force I failed in the T300. And that just results in me understeering wide every fucking turn. Just because I'm not turning in, in enough. <laughs> I think I'm getting used to it though. Also, like, uh, Ermin said something about graininess in the feedback. Like the DD1 had as in the beginning, he said, when he tried it. And I'm not sure if I don't understand what he means. But I don't feel any graininess. Like, it's rather smooth for me. The only thing holding me back right now is my rust and my generally bad driving abilities. Like, you see here, um, I'm turning in way too little on the braking because I stop um, when the force of the T300 told me to stop. And when I come off the brakes, I realize hey, I can turn in much more. And that results in me just cutting across the apex, because I turn in too much then. Uh, the max rotation of the CSLDD is, um, as far as I know, as there's no physical stopper like in belt-driven wheels, it's theoretically uh, infinite. But you shouldn't really use much more than... Uh, If you like driving like uh, trucks or some shit, how much do they use? Like a thousand or something? Also, the GT3 wheel, the McLaren one, it's it lays so nicely in your hands. It's it's really really comfy, very ergonomic. Just gotta stop missing every damn apex there is in Spa. <laughs> so I'm not sure if the max of traction is like 2200 degrees in the driver. But as I said, there should be no physical limit per se. I don't know if the driver has a limit. Okay. Only once I want to do Eau Rouge without invalidating my lap already. But also my prefers aren't coming up for some reason. I did load the right setup, didn't I? Oh, no, I did not. I'm on an aggressive preset. That might be explaining why. So it clicks down. Let's have a look if the prefers come up now. Okay. That was just absolutely retarded. <laughs> uh, the Universal Hub, um, I don't have it, but theoretically it should work just fine, I think. 
as I understood it, everything that was like compatible with the CSL Elite is also compatible with the CSL DD. But don't quote me on that. My god, am I rusty? Holy shit. Um, I don't have it, but I know of people that uh, are in Wave 2 and they already got an email that their order will be shipped soon. So I guess you'll get it way, way early as well in Wave 2. Probably, I think November was stated at first, but my guess right now is that you'll be having it in your hands like beginning October latest, I think. At least if you live in Europe, I don't know how long shipping in the into the US or Asia takes. Uh, just for once, not run wide here. lift a lot the pressures us uh, fine now it seems should be coming up a little bit more there's an apex there somewhere Jesus Christ I don't work with Fnatic. I'm just lucky enough to pretty much live right next to them in Bavaria. So yeah, I got a little visit by the CEO. And yeah, I'm holding it in my hands now already. Should have stayed in third. Can you order it with my US address? Um, I don't know, to be honest. never used something like that
Come on, flat. Yes. Finally. Flat without a cut. <laughs> and miss the apex on the comb. And fuck it up completely. <laughs> Shit. I really gotta say, those 8 Newton meters really take a strain on me noodle game arms. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if I, at my current stage, could handle an, a 1 hour stint. Jesus Christ, why I am so weak. <laughs> This shifter feels so nice. Holy shit. It's not even really the arms that feel like getting worked extremely, it's more like the chest, which is fine I guess, to get rid of my moves. Ah, lift. I gotta learn how much I can run wide here. Just so unsecure to that corner. Because I don't know when I will invalidate my lap and when I won't. Also, that was probably my worst run through Puon ever. I definitely feel like the wheel is giving me a lot more confidence driving at a slip angle than uh, the T300 did. Um, the TGT is 700 as well, I think. It's a belt driven and it has a very basic rim, if I'm correct. Uh, the CSL DD comes at 350 with the 5 Newton meters. No wheel and no pedals. Uh, all in all, like I had my CSL Elite pedals before with the wheelbase and the rim, I paid like 560 something. But that would be without the boost kit. So 5 Newton meters of torque. Uh, it's a hard question to be honest. At least... Well, not really actually. I've I just never used a high-end Thrustmaster wheel, so I, I don't think I'm the one to ask this. But coming from the T300, I'd say... 
the TGT is still belt driven. I don't know about the newton meters it has, but I'm guessing it's like 7 at max. But don't quote me. <laughs> um, I mean, for the price of the CSLDD with a, a basic rim and only 5 newton meters, you should definitely get the CSLDD. But if you still need, you will still need pedals and a wheel rim. And if you want uh, the full experience, like the the boost kit for how much is it, like 130, 140 euros. So they come out about at the same price without pedals. And if you want pedals with the CSLDD, it's a lot more expensive. So. Well, not a lot. Depends on the pedals you'll get. Um, but from if you only take into account the performance of the wheel, I think it's 100% the CSLDD you should get. Because, well, it's a direct drive. The Thrustmaster ecosystem seems to be way, way... Uh, more flexible and better maintained than the Thrustmaster um, economy uh, ecosystem. Like I've used on my T300 the 458 rim pretty much since I got it, because there was not really any incentive to upgrade. Sure, they have the Ferrari F1 rim, which looks nice, but uh, that's really fucking expensive, mate. <laughs> And yeah, I'd, I'd say you should get the CSLDD, especially if you have uh, Thrustmaster pedals already, or some pedal, or you don't need to upgrade your pedals because I don't know, maybe you have some sick using weld sprints or some shit. And yeah, there's, there's really not much going for the TGT. My second thought. Like, the only plus point of the TGT to me is that it's a complete package. At least I think. It always comes with a wheel and uh, pedals. Although really shit pedals. Um, yeah. So if you're on a really, really tight budget... Mm, nah, still, it's still the DD. Let's be honest. You can get the DD with 5 newton meters and uh, basic pedals, and a basic wheel rim like the McLaren or the WRC rim, and it will come around out at uh, about the same price, if not cheaper. You have Log Logitech pedals. Um, I don't know, I, I, uh, do they need to be connected to a Logitech wheelbase or are they just connected to your PC via USB? Because I doubt you can connect Logitech pedals to the CSLDD wheelbase. But also with the CSLDD uh, pedals, the new ones, I think that basic two pedal setup with a brake and a throttle is like 80 euros which is quite cheap uh, given that you get uh, hall sensors on every pedal uh, yeah I think getting the standard 5 newton meter CSLDD with the CSLDD pedals is a nice platform to upgrade further into if you uh, get more money over the next months or years. Like you can get uh, the load cell for the pedals when it comes out. Oh, it's connected to the wheelbase. So you will have to get new pedals. I'm quite sure. Because I really doubt that's a universal plug. So 
So you get the CSLDD wheelbase for 350, McLaren rim for 300. So you get nah, it's not 300, is it? It's 200, I think. So you'll be at 550. Then you need the pedals for 80, I think it was. So you'll end up at 630 euros. And you'll have a completed package for that price that you can really be happy with and race with quite confidently. Even though I'm not showing it because I'm shit. <laughs> but that's the point of the stream, really. I'm just a pleb and wanted to show what other plebs can expect from upgrading. So yeah, six, 630 euros for a complete overhaul of your racing setup. I think it's a really, really, really nice deal. Whoops. Hit the curb. Yeah, if you come from Logitech wheelbases and uh, pedals, I think if you have the money, it's 100% worth it. Also, you don't have to get all the shit at the same point. If you can save up enough for the wheelbase, then over the next couple of months save up enough for the rim, and then you can start using that. It's not... I, I like that Fanatec has... Uh, uh, leaves you a lot of freedom on what you want to buy. Like, if, if you really want to, you can buy everything separately. Which is nice because a lot of people like me have to save up for purchases like this quite a lot. Also, I wouldn't have gotten the boost kit. But I got it gifted from the CEO. And yeah, I would have gotten it for Christmas otherwise. Now if you think uh, the CSLDD would be available not for 355 Newton meters, but only a 8 Newton meter version for uh, what comes out up to 500 euros, I don't think I would have been able to get this straight away. Yeah, you're welcome, Razor. Oh, don't touch the cup. Maybe I should look for some public lobbies to race in. That could be fun, I think. Even though it will just be Monza. Because nobody races anything else in public lobbies. Ah, come on! Why can't I do it at flat anymore? Okay, yeah, let's, let's do some public lobby racing. I'm gonna try some shit. What? So. Monza, 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 Monza. As usual. Anything still is qualifying? They could join. That's qualifying. It's full and only 10 players. Uh, <laughs> as if that's also is available. I really doubt that. Yeah, 
Everything's in rice. Why? Well, this is over in two minutes, so I just join that, watch the two minutes, and then head out to qualifying. What can I drive? I can't drive, can I? I literally just joined. Hey, Julian. Uh, it's amazing, and uh, I gotta say, eight newton meters for my noodle arms is a lot. <laughs> and I'm understeering everywhere because I just stopped turning at the force that T300 told me with that I'm at the grip limit. And in a long corner, I first run wide, and then I realize, oh, I can turn a lot more, and then I cross around over the apex, which has led to quite some funny scenes on Spa. <laughs> also, it's a way, way bigger adjustment than I thought it will be. But it's also because I pretty much changed my whole setup. I'm further away from the screen now, the wheel is closer to my chest, and things like that, so a lot of stuff to readjust to. You got your shipment confirmation already, didn't you? You're in second wave, right? I'm telling you, I'm gonna have a muscle pain in my chest tomorrow. Wird im Lager verpackt. Alright. If you're second wave and it's already getting packaged, then second wave will probably get it when the first wave should have. You're still first wave, okay. Well, I think you can expect it next week sometime then already. You won't believe what those 8 newton meters do to me, holy fuck. I've only done like 10 laps around Spa and I can feel it in my chest. <laughs> It's gonna be a hard six hour race next weekend. Maybe I'll need to tune the force feedback down for this. Uh, it's six hours. Even if you don't, we will be fine, I think. But it's always nice to race, race with you. Ja, der Muskelkater. Ich fange halt auch noch an mit meinem, mit meiner Arbeit am Montag. Ich den ganzen Tag buckeln darf auch noch. Das wird richtig heftig dann am Samstag. wie ich tot sein werde. Ich bin ja schon tot, wenn ich zweimal die Treppe raufgehe wegen Wasser holen und so. Aber hoffentlich werde ich dann auch mal fitter. <lacht> Der Speck muss weg. Die Griffe fühlen sich so nice an dem McLaren-Lenkrad. Richtig gut. Super ergonomisch. Aber man sieht halt jeden Tatscherer. Also nicht Chips essen. Ja, 
Ja, aber ich habe es ja am Dienstag schon gekriegt. Und ich konnte es nicht mal auspacken, weil ich einen Termin in Deggendorf hatte, wo ich hin musste, wo ich heute Mittag erst heimgekommen bin von. Ey, ich bin in meinen Träumen, bin ich die ganze Zeit hier schön rennen gefahren. Ähm, es sieht größer aus, aber warte, ich kann es mal dagegen halten. Ich glaube nicht, dass es wirklich größer ist. So, ich ich halte jetzt mal mein altes davor. Es ist vielleicht links und rechts 5 mm breiter, das äh, GT3 Lenkrad. Im Vergleich zu meinem Thrustmaster Ferrari Lenkrad. Ja, aber hat sich wenigstens gelohnt, der Termin. Jetzt habe ich eine Wohnung. Also habe ich jetzt wenigstens auch keine Termine mehr. Alles fertig ist. Wollen wir überhaupt Qualifying fahren auf Monza? Ja, Handschuhe habe ich mir auch schon überlegt. Ob ich das machen soll. Kann ich ja mal gucken. Bist du im äh, Klotzkowski Teamspeak? Äh, Scott? Ganz dünne Enduro-Handschuhe. Okay. Ja, ich muss mich mal da umgucken, was da so wichtig ist, worauf man achten sollte und alles. Dass halt rutschfest sind und recht dünn sind, glaube ich, ist wichtig. Ich will halt auch keine sündhaft teuren kaufen. Und dann sagen, nee, Handschuhe sind nichts für mich. Mach ich lieber Fettflecken in meinen Lenkrad. Gerade ist von der Berufsschule heim. Oje. <lacht> Stressiger Tag. Warum hast du denn Berufsschule? Sind die noch, sind die noch Ferien? Eigentlich? Ich muss mich richtig umgewöhnen, weil der Schalthebel um einiges fester ist als beim T300. Ah, der ist... Ah, oh, richtig nice. Man merkt, dass es das richtig fette, geile Qualität ist. Und warum bremse ich bei 50 Meter? Weil ich wieder abgelenkt wurde. <lacht> In NRW ist schon wieder Schule. Belastend. Alles deine Schuld. Wie in Enduro auch, ne? Das ist schon gut, dass keiner bei dem im Chat ist bei meinen normalen Rennen, glaube ich. Ich fahre ja so eine Scheiße zusammen den ganzen Tag schon. Weil Stück A, ne? <lacht> Scheiße. Äh, ich habe doch gar nichts wirklich umgestellt. Ich habe eigentlich nur angesteckt und meine äh, Tasten belegt größtenteils, zumindest das richtige Zeugs. 
sonst habe ich noch gar nichts eingestellt eigentlich. Das ist wirklich ziemlich Plug and Play. Gleich ist der Daumen ab. Ja, ich, ich glaube, ich muss mir wirklich angewöhnen, wenn ich irgendwo gegen eine Wand heize, dass ich die Hände wegnehme. 8 Newtonmeter ist tatsächlich schon ordentlich. Wenn die die gegen den Daumen hacken. Ich wüsste gerade aber auch so eigentlich generell vom Fahrverhalten her nicht, was, was ich umstellen würde, weil mich stört eigentlich nichts. Klar, es wird hundertprozentig Einstellungen geben, die das alles noch besser machen. Aber so für mich als Laien mehr oder weniger. Ich würde jetzt nicht sagen können, ja, das, die Einstellung, die muss ich runterstellen. Oder das, da brauche ich mehr von. Weil erstens kenne ich mich damit einfach nicht aus. Und zweitens fühlt sich für mich alles super an. Auch wenn mein Fahren hier gerade ziemlich scheiße aussieht. Aber es liegt einfach daran, dass ich mich nicht konzentriere. Und unglaublich rostig bin. Weil ich ja seit letzten Samstag bin ich ja keine Sekunde mehr gefahren. Ja, ein bisschen rumprobieren. Mir war es halt jetzt wichtig hier für den Stream, dass ich wirklich meine ersten Runden festhalte. Weil ich eine ehrliche Reaktion haben wollte. Alle Reviews, die man eben bis jetzt gesehen hat, waren halt, jo, ich komme von einem 1200 Euro Lenkrad und probiere jetzt das CSLDD aus. Und das ist zwar schön und gut und die Leute kennen sich auch super aus. Aber ich finde, das aus der Sicht von jemandem äh, nochmal zu hören, der das wirklich als Upgrade auch hat, weil er selber von einem alten, relativ günstigen Lenkrad kommt, Finde ich, macht das Ganze noch mal ein bisschen stichfester. Es war vom T300 schon ein Riesensprung, also ja, vom G29. Du wirst wahrscheinlich erst mal Pace verlieren, genau wie ich, weil du dich einfach... Diese Umgewöhnung... Stell dich da drauf ein. Das ist... Wahnsinn. Wie gesagt, ich habe jetzt auch nur ungefähr 3 Newtonmeter mehr Force. Und ich merke jedes Mal beim Einlenken... Ich höre bei ungefähr 70% auf einzulenken. Eben weil ich dann bei der Lenk bei dem Gewicht vom Lenkrad angekommen bin, wo das T300 mir gesagt hat damit, dass ich hier den Grip gerade voll ausschöpfe. Deswegen gehe ich entweder viel zu langsam in die Kurven rein oder lenke einfach nicht zu viel ein. Und dann gehe ich entweder weit oder ich verliere viel Pace oder halt in langen Kurven. Erst weit und dann übers Apex drüber innen. Was auch nicht so optimal ist. Da hast du auch die CS CSL-Pedale äh, dann geholt, die neuen. Nice. Die Pedale sind auch sehr wichtig. Also meine T300-Pedale waren ja schon ziemlich schäbig. Ich weiß nicht, wie es beim G29 ist, aber wahrscheinlich sind die noch schäbiger gewesen. <lacht> Und ja, wenn du dann in einem halben Jahr oder so, wenn die Loadzell dazu rauskommt, die auch noch holst, dann hast du bessere Pedale als ich hier. Da bin ich mir ziemlich sicher. Allein schon wegen den Hallsensoren. Ungefähr 3 Sekunden Pace verloren im Vergleich zu, wenn ich es gewohnt bin. <lacht> Viel zu früh gebremst. Ja, bei Trail Breaking hilft halt wirklich die Load Cell wahnsinnig. Und ich kann es ich kann's zwar immer noch nicht, aber ich kann es definitiv besser als mit meinen äh, Thrustmaster Pedalen. 
Und selbst als ich, äh, als meine Load, als meine Load noch nicht funktioniert hat, beziehungsweise ich auf mein Replacement gewartet habe am Anfang, da hatte ich ja die ganz normale CSL Elite Bremse drin mit diesem ganz normalen, ja, Schwamm oder was es ist. Selbst da habe ich schon gemerkt, das funktioniert um einiges besser als mit dem Thrustmaster Pedalen. Das ist keine Load Cell, aber der Schwamm ist doch um einiges besser als erwartet. Und warum machst du mir hier die Racing Line zu, lieber Porsche? Ja, du weißt, was das heißt, dein neues Equipment, ne? Du musst jetzt schneller sein als Emil dann, die nächsten Rennen. Das war zu spät. So, neue Reifen und dann probieren wir nochmal. Aber ich starte eh aus der Box, glaube ich. <lacht> ja. Wie gesagt, ich bin überrascht, wie lange ich brauche, mich hier umzustellen. Aber eins kann ich schon mal sagen. Es ist... Es macht es um einiges leichter, das neue Lenkrad, wenn du einen Slide hast, den zu fangen. Oder am Slip Angle zu fahren. Ich fühle mich einfach so viel wohler beim Pushen. Zumindest am Exit. Am Entry, wie gesagt, muss ich mich noch dran gewöhnen, wie stark jetzt die Peak Force ist von meinem Grip. Aber am Exit, ich weiß genau, wie stark ich aufs Gas gehen kann und wie, wie weit ich dann die Lenkung auslassen muss. Alles klar. Extrem viel mehr Gefühl, ja. Also man sieht sich, Julian. Viel Spaß bei was auch immer du jetzt machen musst. Und keine Ahnung, wie lange ich jetzt noch online bin. Eigentlich wollte ich heute ja Brands Hatch fürs Competition morgen üben. Aber da bin ich erstmal überhaupt nicht zurechtgekommen. Weil neues Setup, neues Auto, eine Strecke, die ich so gut wie nie gefahren bin. War eine schlechte Kombi. Dann bin ich erstmal auf Spar und jetzt mal hier in der Public Lobby oder zwei. Das sowas hätte ich niemals gefangen mit dem T300 gerade. Ja, vor allem im Lambo habe ich so das Gefühl, da hebt dich jedes kleine Schlagloch aus. Sich vielleicht echt höher legen da. Also, Servus. Bis später dann vielleicht. Mal gucken.
pace is coming back somewhat at least. Finally got the thrust off it seems. To an extent. Still about a second of my normal pace. Got a lot to practice for tomorrow. Oh yeah. Guess I'll stay back at the start. Watch the disaster and entangle. There's no heat at all around the wheelbase. It's about the same temperature as maybe. Maybe it's a little warmer than my desk. So, cooling doesn't seem to be an issue on full 8 Newton meters so far. Twenty minute race, fifty liters should be enough. That should be just fine. Okay, you don't have control over the splitter and ammo. Would have surprised me anyways. Okay, I think I can't. Okay, let's fall back. <laughs> Leave the chaos behind. <laughs> that Aston knows exactly what's up. <laughs> So far, oh, slow car up ahead. <laughs> Safety car pace, crash on the left, slow car on the right. Way early braking. Because nobody wants to die. Car on the left. What's wrong Car with that Ferrari? <laughs> why 
Why are you doing this? Oh! Come back. Yeah, exactly things like that I don't think I could have held in the T300. Because it's not communicated fast enough to your hands. Which with the CS LED now with the dark drive is just fine. Like, I won't say it's easy to hold or easier, but I definitely feel like I'm more capable. If that makes any sense. Slipstream. Easy. The McLaren is quite shit around here, let's be honest. I don't think I could have pulled it off. It was another Lambo or something. Or even a Ferrari. Uh, as you see, I'm fucking retarded. <laughs> I was so, so good at that chicane. But now... It's, it's a whole new experience. Like, I don't want to sound like I'm driving worse with the CSLDD. Because it's certainly not the wheel's fault. It's just... Yeah, it's, it's completely different. I feel like I'm playing another game. That might put it better. That I have to relearn all over again. Even though I have a slight head start because it's not... Well, obviously. <laughs> I've driven ACC before. But it feels so, so different. Much more detail, much more force, stronger force, which my chest feels quite heavily, to be honest. And yeah, I think, I hope at least, that uh, until tomorrow for the Saturday CP race stream, I will have fully adjusted to the CSLDD and I'll be back at my normal pace. I mean, I found a lot of pace already. It was 5 seconds off at Spa at first and I got down, back down to a 219. From a 2.23 and uh, yeah, I'm doing 150s now here, which is not great compared to the aliens, but compared to my normal pace, it's like one and a half seconds slower than normally, which I'm pretty sure is all just down to me needing to adjust, relearning the game. Focusing more and talking less. Because I'm not a streamer like Jadie. I can just ramble on for hours and not, not drop a tenth of pace. <laughs> That's just not me. Just a pleb sitting in a racing chair.
Also, I don't quite understand why I'm struggling on the brakes so much now. Like, maybe updating the driver reset some settings or something. But I think I have to look over that as well. Because I'm using the same reference points as I used prior. And just changing the wheelbase shouldn't affect that at all. Also might be looking at some replays later. To see my to look at my inputs and just stomping on the brakes and staying there. If I'm releasing too early. But I think I'm releasing too late, I'm quite sure. Especially in a Lambo. That gets really really tail heavy if you try to brake too much. Found another six tenth. Course of one race. So yeah, I think I'm already adjusting quite good. Nowhere near my normal pace, as I said. But it'll come back tomorrow or latest, I think. I'm just doing stupid shit. <laughs> Tried things the Lambo just isn't capable of. Because I'm impatient. Which is very bad for a racing driver. And that's probably the reason why I sit at home in front of a screen and not in a real race car. Pretty sure it would be worse than Matsupin. Concerning racecraft, of course. I'm not touching any titties. Hallo, Hinterreifen? Was ist denn hinter mir passiert? What the fuck was that? Why, why was everybody struggling with rear grip all of a sudden through Ascari? 
Was that the uh, certified Rosberg gust of wind? Must have been. <laughs> there is no wind though. Shit like that, I could have never, 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 ever have caught the T300. That's also dangerous because it makes me more confident when overdriving. Which is not at all what you want. You want to be driving at the limit, not over the limit. <laughs> because that makes you slower nonetheless. You can catch all the slides, all the shit. But you will, be, you will be still oh, coming off slower as normally. Holy shit, he broke early. Jesus Christ. That could have ended badly. If I get back into the 48s this race, I'll be amazed. But I doubt it. It's almost over. The tires aren't the best anymore. The rears at least. Because I overdrive the car like an idiot. Drifting all the all out of all the corners. It's amazing how much confidence this wheel gives me. With pushing, like I just drifted into Ascari just now, and I never even dared doing that on the T300. I know you shouldn't do it. I know it's slow, and I know it's risky and retarded. But, yeah, it works, and I now have the confidence to push over the limit from time to time, so I'm, I can find the limit even better now. With T300, if you got over the limit from time to time, I felt like the car was just gone, uncontrollable. So you never really found the true limit, because you never could go over it, per se. Or at least not without spinning out and ruining your lap completely. But with the CSLG, I feel like on the exits, if I over push the car, I give too much throttle, have too much steering, things like that, the wheel communicates it to me fast enough and in a way that I can correct it. And then I know, okay, that was over the limit. Let's go 10% less throttle next time. And that helps a lot finding the limit of the car, at least in my opinion. Sure, you can creep closer and closer from just uh, under underdriving the car. Like, okay, next lap I will do 5% more throttle or I'll steer in like 10 degrees more. Sure, you'll find your limit there eventually as well. But I think uh, when you go over the limit, 
um, and you correct it, it's a lot easier for a, for your brain to commu uh, to not communicate to understand where the actual limit is. At least for me, I have no idea if that makes any sense to anyone else. But I feel like I'm way way more comfortable at finding the limit when I can overdrive the car slightly and correct the mistakes or the, the, the overdriving, the oversteer, understeer, anything like that. But as I said, it could be just a me thing. I'm no alien, I'm no expert, I didn't do this for years already. I pretty much just started sim racing in the first lockdown last year. So, I'm not an expert in any sort of form. I'm just a pleb sitting at home in his spare time. Like, here in this chicane, and I'll, I kicked the throttle after the first corner to get me in a slide and guide the car directly at the apex of the second turn. I could do this with the T300 as well, but it felt a lot more risky. Like, I did that in the 8 hour race for like uh, push laps. Not for every lap, because I just felt like I might lose the car at some point. And you don't want it in a endurance race, obviously. So you go a little bit slower. Now with the CSLD, I think it gives me the confidence to do it lap after lap after lap. Without uh, being scared of wrecking the car, basically. Because the force feedback just arrives that much faster in your hands and uh, every millisecond the wheel is faster is a millisecond you don't have to make up in brain power and uh, people that know me personally know that my brain power isn't that high so even if the CSLDD I don't know about any actual stats so it's just an example is only like 10 milliseconds faster than a T300 10 milliseconds for your brain is a lot. Like those 10 milliseconds you lose with the T300 in comparison, you'll pretty much never be able to gain back. With the CSLDD though, you get those 10 milliseconds off of your brain capacity. Because that's how much the CSLDD communicates faster with your hands. So there's no time to be made up. Which takes strain from your brain. <laughs> Even though I'm just driving like a brainlet right now. Because I'm talking too much. But yeah, as you can see, even talking is strain on your brain. Which takes away from your racing abilities. Just, just take uh, the direct drive as a, a brain boost. Let's let's put it that way. I think that sounds nicer. Brain boost. Relief the strain from your brain. That should be the slogan. Let's be honest. It's way better than a new standard. sound nice. Also I need to remember to set up my MFD for the endurance race otherwise I can't 
manage the pit stops from the car. Which is kind of stupid that you have to do that from the car when driving, let's be honest, but apparently it's not that easy to implement an ACC for some reason. So it's all we have for now. Oh, we got a 48, I didn't even notice. Nice. So I'm almost back at my race pace. Five tenths off of that and I'm completely happy. Let's look what happened in Ascari behind me. <laughs> yeah, just, that was just surreal. I had some fish tailing and suddenly I look into the mirror and pretty much the whole field behind me was gone. Was it that lap? Or was it the last? I think it was when I overtook the Porsche, wasn't it? No fish tailing now. Ah, uh, yeah, that, that's that's the lap, I think. Or was it? No, it was not. When was that? Oh, come on. Let me watch the replay. Leave the server. I really want to see that. Just sudden chaos. Was it earlier? Oh yeah, that's the lap. <laughs> Let's watch it from my rear wing. But Ferrari got it wrong. Snap. Tack, tack. <laughs> another Ferrari. Was it here? That's the Ferrari we want to look at. Oh, so the Porsche broke way early. Oh, not way early. The Ferrari was not ready for it and just... I, I guess that's a racing incident, isn't it? Just wrong place, wrong time for a lot of people though. He just lost it. The other people had nowhere to go. 
Shit happens. Wasn't as dramatic as it looked in my rear mirror. Uh, nope, not exit. Let's look for another public lobby. Maybe Kialami or something. Silverstone, nah. Uh, anything in qualifying, Monza isn't qualifying. Nürburgring. Mm, don't really like that. Spa. Monza. Okay. Um, I think I'll go for a Wii and then I'll have a look again if there's another server up. So I'll be right back. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, spa is on race, sadly. Monza, spa, Monza, Nubukring, Monza, Mount Panorama, Paul Ricard. Let's do Nerbs then. That's oh, full. Well, let's see, anyways. God damn it. Come on, get me into nerves. Somebody is bound to rage quit. Or 
Or should we do Silverstone? Ah, let's do Silverstone. I don't feel like refreshing the server browser for 10 minutes. I have a setup for this. I do actually. Why though? Let's take pressure off. Let's take two off. Looks fine, looks fine. Okay. Why did I do that? Okay, no damage. Oh god. Megat Speckett's chapel will be a, will murder my arms. Holy shit. That will absolutely wreck me noodle arms. Oh, I think the whole track will. <laughs> Shit. It's a full chest workout. Cancel that gym subscription. I got a new racing wheel. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, I'll absolutely murder my arms next week during the 6 hour Monza race. Even though Monza isn't really that exhausting. Let's just be thankful it's not Silverstone. I can't imagine being here in like a Formula 1 car. Like, I have an 8 newton meter wheel and no g force and it's exhausting already. Now imagine with like 6 G's going into the corners and a wheel that's probably double if not even more weight to turn. Oh my goodness. <laughs> There's still people saying that F1 is not a sport. somewhere I think. Haven't found it yet though. Come on turn you bitch! Memo to myself. Don't swear at the Lambo. It will kill you. Like the Aston love to be sweared at. The Lambo. Fiery Latina. It will kick your ass. Oh, and it did again.
turned in too early. How am I P4 with a 202? What SA is the server? <laughs> Closer to the apex, but still no one here. Also, I think I'm too aggressive on the brakes into the slow corners. You can hear a lot of ABS engaging. Plus, my tire pressures aren't going up as far as I think they would have. My setup is for. 36 degrees, I think. And it's 33. Or was it the other way around? I just reload the setup, I think. For the race. Just roll with it. Not doing anything with the pressures. But it's, it's so nice when you turn in. Like, I've adjusted to it more than I did in the beginning of the stream, where I just stopped turning in at a certain force. And I can really feel, like, how much I can turn in without the rear coming around. Like, in cars like the Lambo or the Audi or the Porsche, I always. At the beginning, when I started to learn the new cars, turned in too much, too rapidly, and spun. And I don't think that would happen to me with the CSLDD. Because I'm just getting that communicated a lot better. I'm not sure if it only just. Uh, like if it was on the T300, if, if it was there, but just unnoticeably little? Or if that's completely new. Completely new force I'm discovering here. Like here, yeah, I can feel when the rear start to slide outwards from me turning in too rapidly, too much. And yeah, that just helps a lot with finding the limit, knowing how much to turn. And it doesn't make me faster, yet at least, since I still have a lot of rust. But it certainly gives me more confidence in the car. Like, I think I could drive the Porsche now at reasonably pace. Because I have the confidence. The T300 just felt completely unpredictable. Like, I, I couldn't feel when the rear will be the front, basically, in a Porsche. But now I can read the car a lot better. So, I might try a Porsche again sometime soon. Because I really love that car. How it looks, how it sounds. Not so much how it drives though, at least on the T300, but as I said, that might have changed now with the CSLDD. Oh my god, those, those three corners are just absolute murder for my arms. It's brutal. I hope I can... I can last 20 minutes. <laughs> okay, I get in a little slide from turning in too much or being too fast. And the wheel communicates that to me. I don't have to wait for the screen or the sound to audiovisually communicate that to me. I feel it through the wheel already. 
And I don't think that was there with the T300. I'm sure the wheel got light in the T300 as well. But it just feels a lot smoother, a lot faster. Don't, this exit understeer you just saw, I, I really have the confidence to work with it from now on. To, for example, in a chicane, use that exit oversteer to point the car towards the next apex. I, I did not have the confidence to do that on the T300 frequently. Sure, I could do it, and it worked as well. But as I said, in a endurance race, I only did that for some push laps, like on out laps or in laps, because I just felt it was too risky to do all the time, to push all the time that much. And now with this, I really think I could do this for a whole stint, without having to fear I'll just yeet the car into the next barrier. that apex sometime. <laughs> Not today though. That was bad. Way too early Apex ruined my exit. Taking too much curb there, I think. And settles the car really uh, much. It's just too bumpy to do that. If the curb was smoother, I think that was would be a way faster line, but it isn't. So would have, should have, could have. But doesn't. Yeah, hitting that sausage always fun. Did I bully that guy off? Because I didn't want to. I feel like an asshole now. I really didn't want to bully him off. And another sausage shit. Eat all the curbs. Like you're a BMW or a Bentley. What's going on in chat? Ah, fucked my ex. 
fix it again. Okay. No, 201, was it? No, 202. I'll definitely get into the 2 minute mark. I think. Also, I was driving with a full tank. Because, why not? Thirty four degrees. This is for thirty six. Uh, I'll bump it up one click. Yeah, I hope that's enough. Hello, Lisa. Let's do fifty liters. Thirty seconds. And new tires. I think I gotta get a drive through. Yep, there it is. God damn it. I was ahead. Too much. Anyway, let's have some fun before I take the penalty. Why are you breaking here? Why are you going sideways? Oh my god. How did I dodge that? It's a bigger struggle than I thought it would be. Like learning the new wheel. This is just so different. I'm a, I am a lot slower right now than I am normally. Uh, what was that? Simply because it's well, it's like driving a completely new car. You might stall it the first time you start it, and yeah, just a new learning experience. It's really killing me arms, my chest. It's so much stronger. Okay, I can ensure you I will have pain in my chest and my back and my arms tomorrow. Oh, 
don't run wide, and I did. Racing my ass. There will be lots of racing tomorrow as well. And on Sunday. And Monday after I come home. This is my life now. Why are my pressures not coming up enough? Uh, is the stream laggy? Like low frames per second? Because it looks on my like that on my preview screen, or is it fine? No legs, okay. Yeah, I'm chatting shit, and I'm already six tenths faster. Than my qualifying lap. It's all just a matter of adjustment right now. Like, see, that guy turned into much and spun around. So you can most certainly say he's not using the CSLDD. Because with the CSLDD, he would have felt that he's turning too much and would have opened the steering or slowed down a little more. I spun like that a lot as well with the Lambo on the T300. And not once has this happened to me since I used the CSLDD. It's not paid, but everybody always tells you to support local businesses. So I do. It's not a paid stream. No sponsorship, nothing going on. Just a pleb sitting at home, pretty much. Also, don't take every fucking word I say seriously. I'm not sure my sarcasm comes across as well in English as it does in German. Fuck's that emoji, I can't even see what that is. I really need to sort out a better way to have the chat open. I can, I can read what people write, but not easily. Because the screen's so far away. Emojis like that, there's no way in hell I'm gonna see what that actually is. It's just a purple and brown mess. You sound so crazy 24 7. Well, at least I am funny.
come on, give me my second warning. What? What is that dude doing? Monkey plumber? That's the emoji. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, that, that's racist towards Mario. How can they do that? Please delete this emoji. does not like cats and boxes. my bad. That was absolutely my bad. I'm gonna get sworn at it in the chat. I'm quite sure. People were so toxic during qualifying already. I'll type sorry in the Wellington straight. The hangar straight. The next one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I kind of did expect some sort of revenge as well.
I don't know what happened. I, I don't think I missed my breaking point. Probably just didn't release the brakes enough and understeered. I'll look into that anyways after the race. But I'm pretty sure I just didn't get off the brakes enough. Bad exit. I'm not really speed yet. Still like one and a half, two seconds slower than I'm normally. Still gotta get used to my new shit. And also the screen now with the new wheel is a little further away. That's something to get used to as well. Even though the field of view is only like two or three degrees narrower. Track limit drive through in a 20 minute race. It's not having a good one. I really gotta say, I'm feeling the strain on my body on Silverstone a lot. Monza was fine, but Silverstone is just a whole nother level. All those relatively fast, long corners. Ugh. It's exhausting, and that's my second warning, probably. No, it's not. For whatever reason. Pretty much just made a mistake and ran wide to not lose time, and didn't get a warning for that. Okay. No, that's gonna be a warning. No, it's not either. Okay. game likes me today, I think. much fuel as well. 40 would have been enough I think. Six laps left of fuel and it's gonna be like three, maybe four laps. Over 20 liters in the tank still. a long lot lot faster through the last one
starting to sweat. <laughs> I think I'll do one more public race after this and I'm gonna take a break. I'll be back tomorrow though then. For the competition race around Brands Hatch. And I also have to practice Brands Hatch still. Can I get Chamgmin? That's the question. Two laps left, pretty much. What on earth was that corner? made a mistake I wanted to battle ah oh, man I think I would need gloves for this wheel now can really feel it dripping on my skin 8 newton meters is a lot more than I thought it would, would be. Coming from the T300 which has, which has like 4 or 5 newton meters, I didn't think the increase in pure force itself would have been that much. But it is. <laughs> it is a lot. Silverstone is really, really, really damn exhausting. Holy fuck. I think I raced around Monza and Spa before. That wasn't nearly as exhausting. Okay, let's have a look. This, this is where I got him, this is the lap. Come on! Uh, let's watch it in the menu. Yeah, yeah, the, the chat in that server was amazingly salty. No joke, already in qualifying there were racial slurs everywhere. Uh, I was I was late as well. I, it was just a plain bad move by me. 
was just a little bit bad. It was straight out horrible. This is where I start breaking. I'm on the inside line. I should have started breaking like 20 meters earlier, I think. Then I just keep the foot on here while I'm turning in, where I should have already let off a little. Now the ABS is engaging, so I have even less braking force. I turn and turn and break and break, but yeah. No, that, that was just horrible by me. Absolutely atrocious. God damn it. So let's see what we have again. Monza. Nurburgring. Nah. Nah, Barcelona. There's not a lot of servers right now. At least not in qualifying. Let's just do another Monza, because nothing else is here. I will not do qualifying though, because I need a break, to be honest. <laughs> So I'll be right back.
Okay. One minute thirty left. Qualifying. Forty sevens. Okay. <coughs> Let's see. I got in the thirty forty eights last race on Armand Monza. Which is still a little off my pace, but seems like I'm acclimatizing quite well to the new wheel. Which, by the way, because a lot of people are interested in, is hand warm. Because a lot of people were skeptical about the passive cooling. I'd say it's about, on the outside, maybe 40 degrees, if even. And that's on full force, so it's not really, yeah, It. I don't think it will be a problem with the cooling, not at all. That Vin Diesel? No, it's Scape. Rune Scape, it seems. That's not actually his name, is it? Twenty eight degrees, twenty minutes. How much leaders do I have in here? Ah, let's do fifty. Should be fine. Oh Edmund. What happened? Secret. Anybody called secret? There's nobody called secret. Yeah, someone stole the sweet roll, it seems. I think I'll be stopping at the start again to let the people pass and watch the chaos into turn one. Because that just seems like a lot of fun.
Come on, go past, guys. I don't feel like starting. <laughs> the Bentley literally stopped. <laughs> Yellows. Oh, there's someone spun. I'll go around here. And someone hit me, anyways. God damn it. Swear at me, chat. I know you want to. That's the Monza tactics, it's just to not start. Because there's always chaos into turn one. And the only way to keep out of that chaos is to not be in turn one when it happens. <laughs> Someone's weaving up front. Very nice. Car on the right. Good job. The Amazingly right. done. You truly are the smartest kid in the kindergarten. Oh, there he is again. I wonder what happened. Probably he got killed by someone else because it could not have been his own driving. It's the next Hamilton.
Goodbye, Ferrari. Anders die. slow through here Dude in front is lagging. Ugh, and I'm breaking like an idiot.
warum auch immer er rausgezogen hat. Man hätte halten können. Hab ziemlich früh gebremst. Irgendwas mache ich hier jetzt falsch. What the hell is that guy doing? Let's get damage. much throttle. Just let me pass for whatever reason. Okay, that was weird. Did the Porsche try to kill me, or did he just not break? That was bad. Really bad. Pushing too much.
apex of the first corner. That was just plain bad. <laughs> And all the time again, just go on. God damn it, that was my 48. Just because I got cocky again. Okay. I think my rear tires are cheap, pretty much fucked. <laughs> Two more laps, I think. This and the next. The leader is quite far ahead, I think. Oh god! Need to focus again. Struggling to focus, I'm driving for three hours now. Just with little brakes hopping service. Final lap, okay. Ah, I really can't focus anymore. Driving like a toddler. Goodbye, Lexus. Thank you. 
Okay. Let's have a look at the replay. And then I'm gonna call it a day. I wanna see what the dude into turn one did that he killed me. Probably did the same thing I did in Silverstone. Just got way too optimistic and did a stupid lunge. Was it here? Oh my god! Okay, but here is where he should have started breaking. And he broke slightly after 150 meter board. Which is okay if you're an alien and not on the inside line. And he just killed me. How are you finding the CSLDD? Well, I gotta say, um, I'm coming from the T300 and I have the boost kit, uh, but it's an amazing piece of equipment. It's it's such a big difference. Like, uh, on the T300, I always struggle to find the limit, especially in uh, fast corners, like on Silverstone and the Lambo or the Ferrari. Where when you turn in too fast, like in the cops for example, the rear comes around. I never felt any reason why that happens in the T300. And with the CSLDD I can easily feel the limit on the turn in. So I don't think I have spun all day from turning in too fast. Yeah, and it's there's way more detail, it's way faster communicated to your hands and it's overall just stronger as well like I have 8 newton meters compared to I think 4 or 5 the T300 had and yeah it's it's worth every penny if you ask me but anyways I've been driving for way too long already and I have to practice as well later on again so see you in the next one